Sure, because I was going to say all that stuff in my question. Oh, sound really that. smart. I was going to say, though, Phil, I mean, nobody has to tell you and, and the players that UC Irvine is number two in the RPI and number three in the coaches' poll. No, we know. Yeah, you guys are well aware, but I mean, you know, everyone around here just thinks, you know, Cal Poly and UCSB is like the big match, but this is like a huge, huge soccer match to have, you know, a team that's so highly regarded here coming here uh, and, and you guys having the, abil the ability to, to make a big statement, right? Absolutely. Um, I think the one thing that we know about the league is that every game is challenging. You know, obviously the fan attendance is something that drives that UCSB rivalry. Uh, obviously the location of both schools, uh, the competitiveness of the programs over the last couple of years. But when you look at UC Irvine, they were a team that was in the NCAA tournament last year in the Sweet 16. Uh, they were receiving a first round bye. They won the South uh, to be the number one team going into the conference tournament. So it's not as if they're having just a great season. They've been a good program the last couple of years. Uh, their assistant coach was their, or excuse me, is now their head coach. Um, so he knows the program, he knows the boys, and obviously he's got his team playing very well. I think four of their wins are now overtime victories. So that tells you that they're finding ways to win games. Uh, and I think when it comes down to it, that's what we're doing too. We're finding ways to win games. So you've got two teams that are competitive, that know each other very well, and we're going to go after it. Yeah, I know one thing I can say that it wasn't said. They are receiving one first place vote in the uh, coaches' poll. Um, but where is this match going to be won and lost you know, on the field between the two teams? Yeah, I think the, uh, the transition game is going to be very important. Um, you know, we know a lot about them. They want to play an attractive style similar to how we want to play. Um, obviously, we expect them to come out and do the things that they do well. They want to play through their midfield. They want to try and find Cameron Owasa, who's their star striker, who has also been a part of their, you know, their wider players. Um, he's actually a player that scored a great headed goal against us last year at Irvine, so he's not someone that we're unfamiliar with. Um, they have a, a good number six, we'll call him, as a defensive midfielder who they want to play through. He's kind of their rotation player. So, you know, our objective obviously is to identify their key guys, but it's going to be won and lost in the transition game. You know, can we defend well? I believe we can. Can we score goals? I know we can. So who wants it more? Who wants to get behind the ball and work for the 90 minutes or the 110 minutes? And that's, that's where the points are going to go. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I wanted, I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah, I haven't been at the previous matches, but I mean, you guys, you know, haven't scored as much recently as you had in previous games. I would ask, you know, what what can you do to kind of adjust and and change things up, or or you know, get more goals? But it sounds like that the that you're you're you know, I don't know how you can adjust to a shot that goes off the bar or is so close. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or, you know, is there anything you can do to to cash in on those opportunities uh, yeah. more than you already are? Well, I think it's a mentality. You know, you, you talk about, uh, use basketball as an example, you know, free throws, you know, seeing the ball hitting the back of the net and feeling confident in that. And that's something we talk about with our guys in goal scoring is that, you know, there's a, there's a moment that stands out in the Drake game. Uh, Justin Dillon goes in behind the defender and he's called for offsides. And he doesn't do anything after the play. He simply lets the ball rest, and it, which is wise because he'll probably get a yellow card. But as a staff, we said to each other, he maybe should have just finished it anyway just to see the ball hit the back of the net can do so much for a player and men, you know the mentality of a goal scorer they need to see the ball hit the back of the net you know they need to feel confident in their ability because hitting the hitting the post especially late on can be so deflating to realize that you've probably beaten the goalkeeper at that point you've done the work to get yourself in the right position the reality is you just didn't finish it um, and obviously soccer is a game where scoring is very difficult so I think it's so important for our guys to understand that we're still creating great chances. We just need to finish, and that's all it comes down to. That's what the Drake game, Drake game really came down to. Coach Kaba and John didn't play the last game, I assume, yeah. because of injury or illness. Um, what are, are, are they okay now? What's, what's the status of those guys? Um, Johnny was held out last week due to illness. Um, we felt that his lack of training and obviously just the, the weakness that he felt within his body, flu-like symptoms, um, it, it didn't warrant us to give him the minutes and just further run him and deflate him or de deplete him, I should say, of his fluids. Um, so that was purely an illness thing. He's been fine. He's been in training all week. He'll be good to go. Um, Kaba we held out simply because of the fact that he was nursing a, a, an injury. Um, it was a minor, minor sprain that he occurred in preseason that he just re-aggravated. Um, he was totally fine. He was actually available for the game, and we said, it's more important to have him for conference and for 10 games than for one. Yeah, and, and you guys played only 12 players in that game, made one substitution. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you kind of uh, thought about going in? Uh, I, I would imagine it's not ideal for well, a college I, soccer team. It, 
it's not from a minutes perspective, but it's also very ideal from a minutes perspective because we got a lot of young guys good minutes. Um, I think the one thing that was or that should be noted about the second half, sp specifically in the Drake game, was that we felt the guys were playing well. So we didn't make a change based on the fact that we didn't really need a change. Um, we had other players that were available, but you know, you obviously want to have those relationships develop. Uh, the most important thing is that the, there's some fluidity with, amongst the guys that they're playing well at the right time. That's that's how we felt. Um, as the season goes on and as you guys get known as a team that scores more goals, yeah. uh, other teams are going to try to be more physical, especially given that, I mean, you have some big guys up front, but, you know, throughout the midfield and even on defense, uh, you know, you guys aren't huge. Um, what, what do, what's the message to the team in that regard in terms of uh, playing through physical play or, or, or maybe countering it somehow? What's, what's the way that you guys can do that? Be good with the ball. There's a little man named Lionel Messi who I'd say is pretty good at soccer and he's not the biggest guy in the world. Um, I think the key for us is to control the game through our possession. Uh, you know, the physicality is something that really is only a factor in set pieces and in transitional moments where there's 50-50 balls. Um, you know, if we're able to position ourselves in the right areas of the field, if we're able to take care of the ball and pass with quality, ultimately if our movement is better than the other teams, then, you know, the physicality of the game is, is neutralized almost. Um, Certainly on set pieces and restarts, that's an area where we feel and we have felt all season where we need to be very good. Um, but I think we've been doing just fine. Coach, you talked about, uh, you know, can we score goals? Yes, we can. I believe we can, or can we defend? I believe we can. It's just about who wants it more. As a coach, how do you instill that in your players? How do you get your players to want it more? Well, I think a part of it is the collective buy-in and the belief that they have to see the result. And I think they've seen the result themselves in a couple of games this season. Um, you know, you look at the UCLA game, and we felt as if UCLA was on the front foot the first 20, maybe even 25 minutes. But then we settled in, and the belief at halftime was it's 0 0. We're a good soccer team. We know what we're capable of. Now let's just go and do it. And they found their result. Um, San Francisco, I think, was a game of who wanted it more. And San Francisco was a very good team. Uh, obviously, they scored a goal late on, but it was a 2 0 game where. Really, in the second half, I felt that San Francisco was very good. They played attractive soccer, and they were they were on the front foot for a little while as well. But the guys dug in and believed in themselves. The most important thing is they believed in each other, and they found a way to go and find that second goal, and then ultimately to finish the game with a strong defensive performance. So I think there's some moments in the season so far that show them that they're capable of doing it. Um, do you have any expectations for your team as you move forward into conference? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the first expectation, obviously, is that we're in the conference tournament at the end of the year. And I think the first step to winning the Big West tournament is being in the Big West tournament. So every point is crucial. Um, we want to make sure that we take care of our games at home. I think that's one of the most important things is that we pick up points at home rather than drop points at home. Uh, and obviously, you're going to have to go on the road at some point. And next week, we'll obviously have a good long away trip to Riverside and then to Cal State Fullerton, um, both where there's six points available to the team that's going to play the best. And ultimately, if you're going to be a team that's in the top one or even two in your league, you're going to have to go on the road and pick up points. And that's what we intend to do. 8 0 oh, 1. What makes these Anteaters so good? They're a good group. They've been together for a while. Five, six seniors, I believe. Um, you know, they have a. Uh, they have a collective belief within themselves, the same as we do, that they're capable of playing with some of the best teams in the country. Um, you know, they had some good early season away games that they were able to go and win. Um, I think that's always important, the same as we went to North Carolina State and won. I know that's always, a, as I just talked about, a good feeling to go on the road and pick up points. Um, but they're finding ways to win games. Like I said, four of their last, or three of their last four games have been overtime victories, uh, one in regulation. So, I mean, they're. You know, they're hanging on at the end with um, good results, and then they're able to find a winner. And that's, I think that's the key in college soccer is can you capitalize on your opportunities? Are they vulnerable? Absolutely. No doubt. I think what we've learned from them on film is that they have a couple areas that we intend to exploit. Um, and the reality is is that our, our guys have a good scout on them. They have a good idea of what we're trying to do this, uh, this Thursday night, and it's going to come down to how, how, the, how well they execute.